Robert Scott, when I heard the news that Peter Lee to Mad Butcher had sold his last store, and it was the first one in the chain of Mad Butcher stores, I felt a sadness, my friend. How do you think he feels about it? Sure. How do you feel about it, Pete? <laughs> oh, mate, a little bit sad, but I want to stress it is still a Mad Butcher store. You know, because a lot of people thought oh, it's closed down or something. No, it hasn't closed down. A guy that worked for me for many years and yeah. managed it and was my partner for the last eight years, he now owns it. But, sure. uh, and you're still the beautiful face of the Mad Butcher I'm still under contract to the parent company to yep. do the uh, radio ads and the go openings. I kiss the baby, shake the lady's hands, and I'm very good <laughs> at it, to be fair. Don't yeah. get that mixed up. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we're, we're here in Mangere, man. Take us back to that. Now, what year was it when you opened up the store? Is this mastermind now? Yeah, Look, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. have a clue. It's about 47 years ago, Jeepers. and uh, the shop was closed. And uh, the rumor was the guy, well, the wasn't the rumor, the guy had a butcher shop down the road as well. His name was McEwen, and he spread the rumor that the building was condemned. So no other butcher would look at it. But I've always been a pig headed bloke and sort of, you know, just do my own thing. So I, I'd done some research, went to the council, and found there was nothing wrong with it. And uh, then I chased the owner, and then I ended up. I ended up getting it, get it to rent. It was a small shop, and I built on maybe three times since and brought the section at the back for car parking. So it's been an incredible journey because when I started, I only started because I had a bit of a bad boss, really, and um, I never thought I'd get to where I got, you know, to get a knighthood and, you know, to be able to go kayaking with Sir Graham Henry, the famous All Black coach. Never in my wildest dreams, you know. It's, it's just been an incredible journey. You know, yeah, yeah, tell yeah. us about that opening day. Was it was it quite a big event for the community? Well, no. One of the uh, best days of then I got David Longy to open the extension. Cool. Oh, mate, it was chock a lock. And David used to like pig heads, a uh, pig trotters, and I said I'd give him a few pig trotters for doing it. And oh, mate, he just played it so well. And of course, you know, he was a great talker. Yeah. And um, yeah, we just had a lot of fun, but we've had a lot of memories. One of the best things is the nice people I met in South Auckland. Like, there are some cool dudes out here and good people. Best story I had a cleaner cleaning here, and he was a mate, a league mate, to be fair. And an island bloke rings me, and he said, Oh, you mad butcher? I said, Yeah. He said, Do you know the fellow you're cleaning your shop? I said, Yes. He said, Well, he said, You want to watch him? He's stealing your meat. I said, Give me a name and I'll give you a reward if it's true. He said, oh, I know, mate, you're a good man. You look after the community. He said, I don't want nothing. So, you know, I hid in the bush across the road with the manager, and sure enough, the, the bloody bugger wasn't just pinching a bit, he was pinching a bloody car load. So, anyway, I got out and I, he got in his car and I whacked him a few times. So then I couldn't call the cops. Um, and then his sons, he told his sons I'd beat him up. And then his sons wanted to do me over. Oh, it turned out. But, good times. Yeah, but, good that, times. Oh. but to be fair, that sums up the type of people that live out here. Yeah. They are very loyal. You know, and I, I, one of the things I'm very proud of, I've always defended them. Mm. Not because I've got a business here, but they were my friends. The, the people in my shops were my friends. I can walk down the road and I don't have to look the other way because I've never ripped anyone off. You know, I'm straight up and down. To be fair, Pete, you have got the, the common touch. You can relate to people on all levels. Can I just draw our attention to this photograph behind you of Helen Clark and Stacey Jones? Now, I would think that they would have the same photograph up on their walls. You it's know? a pretty special photo. I mean, she loved rugby league, and mm -hmm. Stacey would do anything for the butcher because his birthday's on May the 7th, mine's on May the 8th. Yeah, no, yeah, very nice. How many stalls in the chain? At its uh, most, did it get to? It's mastermind again. Oh, so I'm um, asking I think questions. You are, right, Robert. Yeah. Um, maybe, maybe 38, 39. Go to the website, www.madbutcher.co.nz. <laughs> or better still, go to my website, uh, www.sirpeterleach.co.nz. Uh, you can actually watch This Is Your Life. You can watch different TV appearances. And we'll make, I know you'll put this on your website, but I'll put it on my website as well. Now, what did you leave school with? What qualifications did you <laughs> Oh, You're a funny man, oh, Robert. What, no, this is giving hope for other people out you know there. I was what did you leave with? What you know you I was with? a dickhead, and mate, I left with nothing. Mate, I um, <laughs> I suffered from dyslexia, yeah. and so I, I virtually left nothing. If you go to my website and watch This Is Your Life, it's a bit of least, <laughs> the, one of the nicest moments about that was they had my teacher, one teacher that I gave me a bit of hope. Her, laid, her name was Mrs. Main, yeah. and to be fair, we had all the worst teachers, but she... She was out of the. She was different, and she also had a nice pair of you know what, and um, braces. Yes, braces. and um, she caught my attention 
you know, very, very good. But no, look, she was uh, fantastic. But no, the, the reality is I didn't know my alphabetical times table, so there's not a lot available. I started off, I worked for the, uh, the P&T delivering telegrams. Then I got a job in the, the stores for the post office. And I had to send a, a box of toilet paper up to the Newland post office and had to get about five signatures. And this place was a, as big about 20 football fields yeah. and it took me half the day to get the signature. Thought, That's no good. So then I got a, there was an ad for a butcher, so I got that job and I got every job by default. No one else applied. And uh, the first day they wanted me to hop in the fridge. I wasn't keen on that because I was bloody scared. Then they wanted me to get the liver out of the fridge. I wasn't keen on that because that was all greasy. But, you know, I just fell in love with butchering. But, no, you can, if you adapt and you work hard, you treat people with respect, you can achieve. And, you know, I, I, I'm a living testimony to that. Yeah, you know? you've done good, man. Yeah. Um, so, your dyslexia. The likes of Tom Cruise, uh, Steven Spielberg, I think, certainly Einstein. Has that helped you, do you think? No, not the bloody dog. No, show, no, mate. dumb question, Robert Scott. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, to be fair. Um, but these are geniuses. These yeah, well, I'm not. I'm just an ordinary guy that's worked hard, and when a barrier got in front of me, I knocked the bastard over. Like Sir Edmund Hillary, I knocked the bastard off. And that's what you've got to do. You can't let it get you down, and you can't feel sorry for yourself. You've just got to go forward. And... Look, I, I, I think mine's a fairy tale. I genuinely believe it's a fairy tale. I started with nothing, and all I ever wanted was one little butcher shop. Yeah. Ended up with a nice little bit. Now, uh, along the journey, I've been able to do things for other people, which has been very satisfactory. You know, I, just recently I had a nice little thing. I, I shouted uh, Peter Fatalofa's wife uh, table at the uh, Pacific Island Awards, you know, and... I didn't want any recognition or that. And she got up on the stage and mentioned it, you know, and I've had some wonderful feedback and had a couple mm. of very, very pleasant phone calls, you know. And, you know, that's because I was able to make a quit out of a butcher shop. Take us through that moment when you put pen to paper and you signed your last store over. How did it feel? To be fair, it was quite sad because I'll get no more free meat. <laughs> <laughs> you know? um, no, but look, it's uh, it's bricks and mortars, um, and life. You know, when you've been sick, and I've had a, you know, I've had my yeah. bout with cancer. Um, it's just another step in your chapter in your life. It's sad, but you know, if you wanted to dwell on it, you could. You could get down and cry. Me and the wife could shit heads together. If you could cry, it sounds better on the radio. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, Robert, I wish you, yeah. I wish you hadn't asked that question, Robert. Thank you. Thank it's you, so touching. He's um, now. Yeah. Well, Robert wanted me to play it up. Um, <laughs> True. But no, look, it's it's just, it's it's bricks and mortars and, you know, you you wake up the next day and life goes on. And, you know, it's just another chapter in your life. I, I may get a job as a radio announcer, who knows? Feel free not, not to answer this. this. Feel free not to answer this. But how is your health at night? Oh, no, it helps good. Yeah? I mean, I, I share my health. And I share it because I don't want sympathy from people. But if I can help other people, and I know I have helped other yeah. people, that's what I do. I mean, my, my life, I've got, uh, I have a rare form of bladder cancer. I have uh, um, Crohn's disease. I've got bloody arthritis. I've got, you know, a few other things. But, Ooh. mate, I'm still fighting for it. I think I could take you and Robert. You could. You could. Easily. Easily. Fair. Easily. Absolutely. I mean, physically, Robert, not kissing <laughs> <laughs> yes. well that's, that's, that's good to know one last question from me um, you've got a choice two contracts in front of you one your career as a butcher that's gone pretty well or one to play professional rugby league which one would you sign oh no there's no hesitation I'd go the butcher way yeah because that's enabled me to do what I've done be the manager of the Kiwis and to you know to get involved in the sport you know I mean everywhere I go people are saying to me are you going to the final butcher are you going yeah, to the finals and I mean it's just great you know I've never played the game and they're wanting me to go to the <laughs> final yeah, no I'll stick to butchering